This is the best way to learn Blender by doing. You can watch all the videos you want, scroll through as many Blender Instagram pages as your heart desires. But if you're not putting in actual effort into the skill, this craft, you'll be going nowhere. So if you're a beginner, intermediate, pro, or anything in between, congratulations, because you clicked on a good video. In this episode, you'll learn modeling fundamentals, essential hotkeys, and the essence of good topology, all to create this work of art. For you newbies out there, I take this slow enough, so this will be an excellent first project for you to work on, but you have to put in the hard work. Screencast keys are at the bottom of the screen so that you can see exactly what I'm pressing. As always, leave a comment if you're confused, impressed, or simply want to criticize my work. All are welcome. Or if you're extra bold, send me a message on Instagram linked below. Anyway, intro over, time to start the video. All right, so welcome to the tutorial. Before we get started, we're going to need to do a little bit of setup in order to make the modeling process as straightforward as possible. So the first thing we're going to do is go up to edit, then preferences, and in the add-on section here, we're going to search for the F2 add-on. This will be extremely useful in speeding up our modeling process as you'll see very shortly. So make sure to enable the F2 add-on and then you can close the preferences tab. So then the next thing we're going to do is add in our reference image by pressing shift a image and then reference. This is a, this is a reference image I found online. I'll make sure to link it in the description below if you want to use the exact one in this tutorial. So once I've added it in, I can go into front view by pressing my tilde key and press front. Since I don't have a numpad, I have to use the tilde key, which gives the selection. But if you have a numpad, you can just press the numbers as seen here. Anyway, as you can see, our reference image isn't aligned to the front view. So first I'm going to press Alt R to clear rotation. And then I can press R, X and 90. And that will rotate at 90 degrees on the X axis. And before I do anything else, I'm just going to scale it up a little bit like so. And since this is the front view, I want this front image here. So I'm going to bring it over on the X axis by pressing G and X and align it in the center to ensure that our model will be symmetrical we want to make sure our reference image is symmetrical so i'll press alt and z which enables x-ray mode or you can click this button up here and just make sure that the edges of the helmets are pretty much the same distance from the edges of the cube so i will just move this over ever so slightly but we can always adjust this later if need be so that's the front reference image done and now i can move over to the side reference image so I can press shift D to duplicate our reference image, right click to clear the rotation. And then I will press R, X and 90. I mean, R, Z and 90 to rotate to 90 degrees on the Z axis. And then I'll go into right view by pressing my tilde key. And then I'll just move it back a little bit like so. We don't have to do too much, so I can just move this over on the X axis and then move this back on the Y axis. So that's all the setup for our reference image done. So I'm going to go into the front view and we will get rid of the default cube. Don't need that anymore. I'll press shift A and we'll add in a mesh and plane. As you can see, you can't see it because it's lying down flat. So we can press R, X and 90 to rotate in 90 degrees on the X axis. I'll go into front view once more. And before we start the modeling process, what we're going to need to do is add in a mirror modifier. This will greatly speed up our modeling process because this means that we'll only need to work on half of the model. So to do that, first we need to actually delete half of the mesh. So click on the mesh like so, and then tab into edit mode. I'll press control R and this will bring in an edge loop. So once I left click, it gives me the option to move it anywhere I want, but I'll right click to leave it in the center. And then I'll press three on my keyboard, or you can go up here to enable face select mode vertex edge and face select mode one two and three i'll press x to delete the face right here and then i'll go into the modifiers panel on the right add modifier and then click on the mirror modifier as you can see we have this option called clipping when it's not enabled we are able to pull apart the faces like so however when we have clipping on which we will leave on for the remainder of this tutorial the middle vertices stay together so now we're finally ready to start modeling. So I'll press Alt Z once more to enable X-ray mode. And then I will scale down the face by pressing S 
And the first part of the helmet we're going to model is this brow region right here. So I'll scale it down and then move it up so that the model is in between the eyes, like so. Scale it down. And then what we can do is go into right view and ensure that it lines up with the side view as well. So I'm pressing G and Y to bring it to the front. Just as a side note, if I ever miss anything, you can see that screencast keys are enabled. So make sure to look at the bottom left hand side of the screen if I ever miss anything. So now we're going to trace out the brow region. I'm going to press E, extrude, E again, and then E once more so that we're at this part of the helmets. I'll go into right view and as you can see, nothing is aligned. So what we can do is bring it back on the Y axis by pressing G and Y like so. Select the next one, which is here. G and Y, bring it back. Select this one, G, Y. Don't bring it too far back because it is supposed to have some curvature to it. And then G and Y, ever so slightly. And then I'll press one for vertex select and then manually manipulates all of the, uh, all of the vertices that need better placements. So these ones here, so I'll select them, shift select, and then bring them back so that they have the slant. And because I like nice topology flow, I'll bring these ones back so that they all have some type of angle towards them. So now that we've done the brow region, we can continue modeling the face by going into edge select, selecting this edge here, pressing E and then Z, bringing it down, and then I'll extrude it four more times. So one, two, three, four. And then just to make it a bit more even, I'll shift them around like so, or right, pressing G and Z. But if we go into the side view, you can see that it is not properly aligned. So we're going to need to grab all of the edges here and bring it forward on the Y axis by pressing G and Y. Select the next one, G and Y. Select this edge here. Whoops. You know what? I'll go into vertex select and then box select by just holding the left click button. And that makes it easier to select things from this perspective. Okay. So now we're going to build the upper face region by just pressing E to extrude. E, E, and then E once more. And I'll just make sure that this vertex here is just again, just tracing out the basic shape of the helmet. So now we just need to position things in the side view. So I'll press G and Y to bring it back. Do it to the next one. G, Y. We'll bring it around here. Next one. G and Y. And then this one. We don't need to bring it too far back. G and Y. And then I'll go into vertex select mode and just trace around the guidelines as given in the reference image. Again, to keep that nice topology flow, I'll make sure that the uh, edges have a similar angle. So, yep. Hopefully you're starting to kind of get the principles behind this. It's just going between front and side view in order to build the model as seen in the reference image. So if we just go into free 3D view, you can already see the model starting, starting to take shape. Anyway. We can continue building the model by now using the F2 add-on, but a little bit about topology before we delve more into the modeling process. All right, so a little bit about topology. Blender, like most other 3D software, including Cinema 4D and Maya, like quad topology. This just means four sides to a shape. One, two, three, and four, making the face. This means that when you press Control R, you can see an edge loop that follows the natural path of the quads that you've created. This is extremely important when you're manipulating your vertices. This is extremely important for rigging and animation where you need to manipulate your faces in such a way that, so that the movements look natural and you're not really destroying the actual shape of your model. However, when you don't have quad topology, let's say if I have these two faces here and join them, you can see that I have two three-sided shapes or triangles. For Blender, this is known as an N-Gon, so any shape that does not have quad topology. So now when I press Ctrl R, it breaks the natural flow of our topology, which is not what we want. So ideally, in every situation when you're modeling, you want to have this quad topology. 
Having clean quad topology also makes it easier for Blender to apply modifiers such as the subdivision surface modifier which we will be adding in later. With bad topology it makes it much more difficult for Blender to accurately output what you're trying to create. So try and work with Blender and have your topology as clean as possible. Anyway, lesson over, let's get back to building our model. We can continue modeling by using the F2 add-on as, as mentioned earlier. The F2 add-on, so we can use the F2 add-on when we have two perpendicular edges like so. And by selecting the middle vertex and pressing F, we get a quad like so. So we can use this to build the rest of our model by pressing F, F and F, and then manipulating our mesh by just pressing G and aligning it to where we want it to be in both perspectives, of course. Pressing G and Y, G and Y, like so. Again, trying to trace out the shape as closely as possible in both perspectives. This might mean moving around some of the other edges as well. Okay, so we can continue by pressing F and F, bringing it around here, going into side view, pressing G and Y, obeying this curve as you can see in the reference image pressing f again bringing it down to the mouth and then pressing f once more and going into right view and g g and y g and y and as you can see our face is starting to take shape so make sure to save just so that we don't lose any progress so i'll do that now all right, so we can continue building our model by pressing Alt and right clicking so that we have this edge loop here and then pressing E and just bringing it down. And then we can just manipulate the vertices like so, just dragging and moving them, enabling, whoops, enabling X-ray modes once again, just so we can see both the mesh and our, so that we can see both the mesh and our reference image. So I'm just gonna move it in position like so grabbing the vertices and tracing out the basic shape. So it doesn't perfectly align in front view. So I'll press G and X to make sure that it follows this curve here. G and X and then G and X. So if I press Alt Z, Again, we can see how our model looks. Not bad. We can move on to making the mouth and jaw region of the helmets by, by tabbing into edit mode once more, alt clicking this edge here, this edge loop here, and pressing shift D, bringing it down and somewhat inwards. And then we're going to trace out this shape like so. I'll press E on this edge loop here. I just want to select this region here. So I'll press L as it's separate from this part here. And I'll press E and just bring it down. And then I will, once again, just manually manipulate all of the vertices just so that we have the correct shape as seen in the reference image. Okay, and then I'll go into right view and once again, no surprise here, it's not lined up properly. So we can just move it back and position it where they need to be. Again, should be getting the hang of this. It's not too difficult. So just positioning it, GY. Uh, GY and I'll bring this down like so but don't worry if your mesh doesn't exactly line up with the reference image sometimes it's better to use your own intuition and just go off a of feel so as you can see I don't like the way this looks so I'll just bring it down and I think that already looks better Now we can continue with this region by just alt clicking again, bringing it down and once again, tracing out the shape, 
crazy. More of the same stuff. Who would have thought? More tracing. So. Okay, again, just going into front and side view, just reiterating once again. Okay, so now we need to fill in this region here so we can go into the bottom, select this edge here. As you can see, it's in between two other vertices, two neighboring vertices, and then we can press F to fill. And then our trusty F2 add-on comes in to uh, our, yeah, whatever. I'll press F to fill, close the gap, F, fill. There we go. Shout out if your name is Phil. Comment down if your name is Phil and I'm just saying your name all the time. Wow. Um, anyway, anyway. Um, down here, press F and we can fill that like so. So now we can continue modeling the helmets. We can continue modeling this region of the helmet by alt clicking this edge loop here, pressing E, extruding, and we can bring it up here. I'll press alt Z for wireframe mode once again, bring it down, and then just bring this up like so. Again, don't bother trying to um, follow the shape exactly because we don't have enough topology to uh, accommodate for like this curvature here. But once we add in the subdivision surface modifier, it'll make things look a lot neater. So from the side, from the front view, it it's not aligned, da da da, you know the story now. So I'll just alt click here, press G and X, bring it out. Um, you know what? I'll just select all of these faces here. Control click to here and just bring it down. And just bring this forward like so. Okay. And then I'll alt click once again. And this is kind of where I go off the rail. So I'll just uh, move this up like so. Grab this edge loop here. And then we'll bring it down. And bring this close up here. And maybe this back here. And then once again, we kind of need to widen the jaw area. So I'll press G and X. Go press Alt Z. And you can see that our edges here have been somewhat neglected. So we do need to ensure that we are making sure we need to ensure that the uh, topology from both sides is properly served. GX, whoops, GX, okay, press X, and there we go. So you can see it coming together. Hopefully you have something like this, and now we can just continue building the model. Okay, so once we're at this stage, I think we should continue making the face plate of the helmet. So I'll do that by selecting the mesh, tapping into edit mode, and what we can do is connect these two parts here by selecting this vertex here shift clicking this vertex here and pressing F to fill. Just so that it lines up with the reference image, I'm just going to move over this edge like so. For some reason, the F2 add-on won't work when we press F here. So uh, what we're going to do is just extrude this vertex here and then select all four vertices like so and press F. So now that we've got this face here, uh, we can use the F2 add-on and now it seems to work and we can position it along the helmets around here. Just making sure that these line up in the front view as well. All right. So now we can make the rest of the face by alt clicking this edge loop here and then pressing E to extrude, E, and then we'll go into front view. You know what, I'll grab this one here, maybe grab it like so, so that we have two. 
and then I will select these edges here by selecting this vertex here, control clicking so that we have all of the vertices in between and then extruding it up once more. Now this needs a lot of repositioning. So we can do that in edit mode by grabbing the vertices like so. I'll enable wireframe mode just so, whoops, just so that I can see through our uh, mesh and then I'll make sure that it all lines up nice and neatly. Oops. So yeah, feel free to pause, slow down or do whatever in order to uh, help you follow along with this tutorial. I might be going a bit fast, so uh, yeah, make sure to pause whenever necessary. I'm just making sure that the vertices line up with the reference image more or less. Once again, if they don't line up perfectly, that's completely fine. Definitely prioritize the look of your mesh over how it looks in uh, the front and side view. And then I'll move these back like so. And we want to have a nice curvature to our helmets. So this is when we need to go into our 3D view and kind of assess the situation to uh, make sure that it looks a bit more natural. One tip I often use when moving around vertices is holding down the shift button, which, which makes the movement of our selection a lot slower, just so that I can make a lot more slower refinements. Okay, so this is looking a lot more neat, a lot more tidy, going into 3D view, into object mode, and this is looking very nice. All right, so once we've gone up to this part, we can continue making the rest of the helmets. However, one thing to note is that the face plate, so this section here, is slightly separate from the rest of the helmet. To achieve this effect, what we can do is just select all of the edges around the helmet like so. So what we can do is select this vertex here and then select all around here by alt-clicking, alt-click, until we've got the entire edge loop like so. And then we can just press E to extrude, S to scale inwards, and I'll just see how that looks from this side. I'll bring it in on the X axis a little bit. So now we've got that indentation. At this point, we can continue making the helmet. So what I can do is tab into edit mode again. I'll just double tap G to uh, kind of make the uh, edge loop a little less extreme. And now I can start modeling the rest of the helmet. So I'll go into top view, press F to fill using the F2 add-on once again. And I'll start building the top of the helmets. What we need to do is select these edges here or these vertices, whichever one you want to call them. And then we can start extruding back like so. Press E to extrude. And then we we'll just bring it up ever so slightly. What I can do is just scale it on the Y axis like so. I'll ensure to line it up with the reference image, just pulling it down where I think it should line up. All right. So once again, I'll alt click this edge loop here, press E to extrude, bring it back and we can rotate it like so. It doesn't matter too much that we have this very sharp angle between uh, these two edges here. Um, we'll, when we add in our subdivision surface modifier, it will be a lot less noticeable. So I'll extrude once again, bring it down, maybe rotate, place like so. And one thing you'll notice in our reference image is that it has some sort of a lip where the metal kind of folds in on itself before going back down. So we can replicate this by just extruding inwards as I'll show you right now. So once you have the edge loop selected, you can press E and S to scale in and then bring it on the Y axis like so. Maybe I'll scale it in a little bit more just to accentuate the uh, how it looks. So then I'll press E once more, rotate it a little bit and then align like so. And then we'll do the same thing. So pressing E, then the S to scale, bring it on the Y axis. And then I'll press E again, rotate it. Again, just tracing out the 
shape of the reference image as provided. And then I'll press E. And then we'll do the lip once more. So E and then S to scale, G, Y. And make this one a bit more exaggerated than the other two. So we can bring it on the X axis to shorten it on the X axis a bit more. And then I'll press E. So now that we've got the back of the helmet, we just need to make sure that it aligns from the front view. And as you can see, the helmet kind of widens as it goes backwards. So what we can do is start to manipulate some of the vertices just so that we have this effect. So what I'll do is just grab these edges here. Whoops. So what I'll do is grab these edges here, press G and X to bring them out. And for the top one as well, GX. So I'll just do a little bit of adjustment just so that the, uh, the change looks a bit more gradual because as you can see, we have this unnatural looking uh, curvature to it. So I'll just change the vertices, just move the vertices around until it looks natural. So I'll bring this up a little bit. And then I will bring select this vertex here, control click to the bottom one and go to the top and make sure that the curve is more rounded. I'll do the same for the one closer to the inside. So select this vertex here and then the other one. All right. So from the front view, that's looking a lot better. So this means we can start filling in the rest of the helmet by using the F2 add-on. So go back to your helmet, tab into edit mode, and we'll select this vertex here. As you can see, we're it's in between two other vert vertices. So I'll press F to use the F2 add-on, and it's already filling in the rest of our helmet. It's At this point, we're not doing anything that we haven't done already. So right now you should be comfortable. You should be like, I already know how to do this. I barely even need the video. But of course, we're gonna get to some other stuff that you might need my help with. So don't click off the video right now. But of course, we're just using the F2 add-on to trace along the reference image, as you already know. So we'll just keep building down the helmet on the right side and then we'll make our way over. I was kind of a bit hasty doing these parts here, but we'll make sure not to go past this section. Uh, as you can see in the reference image because the lip doesn't oh, continue like throughout. You'll see in a moment what I mean. So once you've gone to this section, you need a way of connecting the jaw to the rest of the helmets. So what we can do is similar to the faceplate is selecting all of the edge loops around the helmet. Yeah, once you selected everything like so, you can press E and then press Alt S to scale it inwards a little bit. Not too much, of course. And we can just bring it down and back into the helmet, like so. Okay, so once we have this part here, what we can do is kind of merge it to the rest of our helmet by selecting this vertex here and then this neighboring one here and pressing M merge at center. We'll do the same thing for this vertex and this vertex here. So M merge at center. And just to make it a bit more neat, we can tuck in the oops by pressing G. We can just move it back into the helmets. Okay. continue building the helmets by using the F2 add-on, which is working very nicely in our favor. Uh, making sure to check from all views that your vertices are not deviating too much from the original design. As you can see, using the F2 add-on, this vertex starts to sticking out a bit too much.
All right, hopefully you're enjoying this. Um, I'll say this is the part where I get to relax a little bit in, in terms of just the making process where you just need to kind of, or you can kind of just shut off your mind and just build the, the helmets. So before we continue, uh, we need to start building the rest of the lip here. So what we can do is just use the F2 add-on like so to build it, build the underneath. And then we'll start building from this side by using the F2 add-on. And then once you have your, once you have your helmet looking like this, what you're going to do is select this vertex here in the middle and then press F. So as you can see now, our lip goes vertically down. Vertically down, is that, redund is that a redundant term? I don't know, but um, anyway. So just do the same for this side here. Uh, keep filling, F, 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 and then let me just shift around the vertices like so. And what I can do is just press F and then press F again. All right. And do that once more for the very bottom part. So F. Oops. And then make sure that these two are filled in as well. go okay so now we just need to do a little bit of cleanup this will be where our topology starts to get a little bit messy it won't take too much effort to sort out so what I can do is just in x-ray mode I'll just select these vertices and just grab them except for this one this one shouldn't yeah okay there we go and then we'll start filling in the rest of the helmet using the F2 add-on of course what I can do is just select all these vertices, just scale them on the Z axis and rotate them a bit. That will make them a bit easier to uh, manipulate once I kind of put them back into the, the rest of the model. Somewhat related, but not really. Doctor Strange 2. I thought it was trash. Like, really and truly, it was. I did not like that film. And a lot of you Marvel fanboys are gonna come at me in the comments, dislike my video. Go ahead, dislike the video. What's it gonna do, huh? I'm telling you, that film was messy all over the place and just so contrived. Like that girl, America, she could have been a magic rock or a magic slice of bread or whatever. And the plot would barely have changed. Doctor Strange, this is, this is his movie, but it's not his movie. His character barely changed. So I was like, this movie barely did anything for him. It was a lot more interesting in his first film in Infinity War, but like this film, they barely gave him like anything in terms of character development, other than being hung over a girl who's already married. Yikes. I, I, I will say Wanda, definitely one of my favorite MCU villains, but like I'm telling you, it felt so contrived, so, you know, I did like the camera shots, you know, that was cool, that was cool, but I was just thinking about it, you know, since we're doing Iron Man and Marvel stuff, so I was like, man, this, this movie just, this movie kind of sucks, um, I don't care though, like, I was still gonna watch more Marvel films, but that was not it. Anyway, so uh, once we get to this part, we'll actually need to start adding in a bit more topology just so that we can just so that we can link in the faces. So you'll see what I mean by when I press Control R to add in an edge loop. This is where we can connect these two faces and these two, well these these two. Then we need to add in some more. So I'll undo that. Press Control R and then fill in this face. It seems like we need a an edge loop here. So I'll press Control R on this side. Select these two and fill. Select these two and fill. And then one, two, three, four. 
perfect. And there we go. So our helmet is pretty much done on the side of the basic modeling. Just need to do a bit of uh, adjustments just so that our helmet doesn't look too abnormal. Okay, so I almost forgot that we need to just fill in this bottom bit, but it's nothing that we haven't done already. So just tap into edit mode and just make sure that we are selecting the right vertices. So I'll just move this up on the Z axis ever so slightly, go into bottom view and just fill in the faces like so. So as you can see, this part here is gonna be a little bit tricky to fill in. So I suggest starting from the bottom and then we'll figure out how to uh, uh, make sure that all of the vertices kind of match together. So we're definitely going to need to add in some edge loops to uh, kind of accommodate for the amount of vertices we have here. We'll do that in just a minute. All right. So then when we get here, as you can see, we need quite a few edge loops at the front. So we'll just count the amount that we need for uh, all of the spaces to be filled with quad topology. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll just press control R here and then scroll up until we have six uh, edge loops like so. And then I'll press G twice to uh, slide the edge loops. This isn't the nicest topology right now, but we can always adjust once we filled in everything. So I'll press G twice, select these four, press F to fill, slide this over. Again, very uh, ugly topology, but um, I'll definitely make sure that that's changed in a moment. One, two, three, four, fill. One, two, three, four, whoops, one, two, three and four. One, two, three, four. All right, there we go. So our basic modeling is pretty much done. So with the basic modeling done, we can enable the subsurface modifier by pressing control and three, or we can go up to add modifiers and you'll see subsurface or subdivision surface modifier right here. So looking around the model, it looks pretty good. We'll just need to add some creases or some supporting edge loops and we'll just need to fix this area here. But other than that, uh, the model in subsurf mode is very nice. So what I'm going to do is just grab this and just pull it out, kind of uh, eliminating some of the dents here. Sometimes uh, it is just a matter of manipulating how everything looks. So for the most part, you do want to see your vertices poking out of the uh, the model like this not hiding within the actual uh, design so if you get a lot of um, unwanted normals uh, as you can see here and you've already tried manipulating it uh, select so tab into edit mode select everything by pressing a and then press shift n and this will recalculate the normals and that's making everything look so much better so now we can do a little bit of subsurface modeling uh, this just involves us using creasing. You can alternatively use edge loops to sharpen up your edges like so. So if I did this, you can already see that this part here is uh, making our model look a lot sharper. However, that comes with uh, us having to manipulate more topology, which I don't really want to do. And why do that when we already have the crease function, which, which will work just as well for uh, this function. So I'll show you how it's done by selecting these outer edges on the uh, on the model uh, along the, the faceplate of the helmet. So let me just temporarily disable the subdivision surface modifier by clicking on this TV icon and then just selecting around the, uh, whoops, the edge of the faceplates like so. And then pressing control E and one. And then if we put on the mirror model if we put on the subsurf modifier you can see that all of these edges have been sharpened up one thing i noticed is that our helmet on the inside doesn't appear to uh to come in as much oh so like these edges here and then just press g z to bring them down just so that they're a bit more noticeable uh on the uh 
just from the outside of the model. So then when, when we go into subsurface modifier, when we pawn the subs within the surface modifier, you can see that uh, it just looks a bit more noticeable. Let's just drag this area down like so. All right, that looks better. And we can continue creasing. So uh, I'll do it for the inner crease of our uh, face plates. So just alt clicking all of these edges here, trying to uh, select every single one. Select here. And also select the in inside of the helmets. Oops. So all of these parts here. Um, I didn't mean to select this part, but we're gonna we're going to crease it anyway. So we can press Shift E and one to uh, increase that. Okay. And then we'll do it for this outer lip area of the helmet. So Shift E one. And I'll continue doing it for more of the jaw. So again, this is fairly. Uh, straightforward just selecting different parts that you want to crease and just press and shift e hmm. all right um, i'll make sure to do the insides like so shift e and one and then turn on subdivision surface modifier all right and just to get rid of some of those artifacts when it comes to our subdivision surface modifier you want to crease these corners here as well so that looks a lot better I'll make sure to crease uh, these areas here so if I go back press shift and one actually I'll just crease I'll just crease one of them so shift and one was it also don't be afraid to uh, freestyle with it maybe you don't like some of the creases I'm doing like or do whatever makes you happy. Uh, this is your project, so, you know, experiment with it. All right, uh, I'll crease the brow, the brow region as well. So select this edge here, control click here, and then press shift E and one. All right. Um, I'll crease the eyes as well. Um, actually for the eyes, let's select this. Let's uh, alt click this edge loop here and press E and just bring it back on the Y axis so that it has some thickness to it. And then I guess we should fill it. Can we fill it using quad topology? Let's see. So just disable that quickly. So you can press F to fill. And yes, it is quad topology, my favorites. Probably sick of hearing that, but uh, yep, <laughs> no comments. Anyway, um, I'm going to just crease the corners of the edge loops as well by selecting this and this and the ones on whoops the corners of the eyes as well shift e one and then that sharpens up the edges hmm i don't know if i like that or not i think without is fine all right so um also for the cheek area we can alt click this edge loop here up until here, I would say, whoops, up until here, shift E and one, and that sharpens up, up this place here. There is already a lot of uh, topology around this area, hence why there's already a bit of a crease. Um, I actually want to make this part a bit less pronounced, so I'll just grab it, shift and move it back in, trying to dissipate uh, that noticeable crease. All right. Just looking around for places that I can crease. And let's go to the back of the helmet. So alt click this edge here. Um, also, if you don't want to keep switching back between these two, you can press this button here. And that will show you how the uh, subdivision surface modifier or more accurate representation of how it looks. So I'll alt click this edge here. And here, shift E and one. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's already doing the job of showing us how it actually looks. So shift D and one, shift D and one. Ooh, as you can see, it's gone all the way here. So if there's a crease that you want to undo, just uh, select all of the, the creased areas. So uh, for me, it's going to be from uh, this one here. And then I'm going to control click all the way, whoops. I'm gonna control click here, 
and up to here. Shift E and then we'll press minus one to get rid of that crease. I'm speeding this part up just because I know if you've already made it to this part in the video, you already know what you're doing. So I'm just creasing all the areas around the back of the helmet, making sure to get into those corners and pressing shift D. But you already knew that. Just for the people who've made it all the way to this part of the tutorial, leave me this emoji, this icy emoji, just so I know who the real ones are who have gone through this video throughout. Anyway. All right, so we're pretty much done with the helmet. However, if, if you want to add this little uh, side piece here, I have no idea what it's for. Maybe it's for him to do his Zoom calls while he's fighting Thanos or something. But what we can do is just add in a cylinder. I'll just press Alt-G to clear rotation, R, X, and 90. Ooh, Y, R, Y, and 90. Go to front view and we'll scale it down like so. And then what we can do is just bring it to the side of the head here bring it to the side like so and then I will tab into edit modes scale on the x-axis a bit more and then I'll press s shift x to scale it on everything but the x-axis and just scale it a bit more and then I'll move over like so all right then what I can do is just do a few extrusions by tabbing into edit mode pressing i to inset and then maybe bring it forward on the x-axis and then I to inset and then I feel like it goes back into the helmet so I'll press E to extrude inwards and then I and then E to extrude inwards like so I think that's how it should look and then what we can do is just delete this interface here let me just bring everything forward a little bit more on the x-axis and then what we can do is just fill in this face by we'll fill in this face here by using the grid fill function. So this will give us a bunch of faces, quad faces, my favorite, instead of just a single face like so. So what you need to do is press Control and F and then find grid fill. And as you can see, we've got the lovely quad topology. I want to make it all like a straight and aligned. So I'll just change the offset until it is nice and straight like this. Fantastic. So to make the little, uh, I guess, indentation of this part here, again, no idea what it's for. We can select these faces here up until the middle and then press E to extrude inwards like so. And then I will bring this forward on the Y axis. So it doesn't look great, but if we add in a subdivision surface modifier by pressing control three, a level three subdivision surface modifier, it looks slightly better. And then I will just add in all of the creases that um, should be there to, just to sharpen up our edges once more. Uh, I might be going quite quickly. Um, this is because uh, coming to the end of the tutorial and I just feel like uh, this is fairly self-explanatory, simple stuff that I don't want to extend the runtime for. So I'll press Shift E and one to, uh, to sharpen it like so. And then what we can do is also sharpen up these edges here. So select these. Okay. Shift E and one. And we'll see how that looks. Looks good. Just need to sharpen up, I guess, these ones here. Shift E and one. Go back into subsurf mode. And we can just make this a bit rounder by, um, whoops, can't really see anything, by bringing it back on the Y axis. We don't need it to be too rounded. Huh. Okay, I guess it was just fine just being completely straight. Whoops. Okay. And then what I can do actually is just get these and then press S and Z to scale them on the Z axis to bring them a bit closer, just so that uh, the this shape is a bit more like the reference image. Okay, and then if you want to mirror it on the other side, first of all, let's uh, position it kind of in the helmet, rotate it like so, 
and as you can see it's kind of clipping within our mesh so what we can do is just select this face here and then bring it back on the on the x-axis and i'll bring this in like so and we'll just bring this part in like so it does look fairly chunky but uh this is kind of the best you can do with it that's why i don't really like i don't really like this if i'm being honest it's just if you want to do it and then if you want to mirror it, mirror it we'll just add in the modifier and change the mirror object to our helmets and then we've got these uh funny looking ear things either way that's if you want to do it i'm getting rid of these and uh yeah so that's the helmets a few more things i guess if you want to add a little bit of a design flair to it so there are gaps in the iron man helmet which can give you a cool effect so maybe if i tab into edit mode press ctrl r and then press ctrl b to bevel it once and then delete this face we can see that it gives us this cool gap in between and then if you want you can also select these edges here and sharpen them like so uh, so that's one idea uh, and you can also just do it and you can do this like all across the helmet so maybe you can add in more edge loops like so make sure to uh whoops make sure to bevel these as well press ctrl b and then what you can do is just select all of these faces along here and then delete them and that doesn't look too good but uh you get the idea right uh just at, just deleting some of the faces to give those gaps like you'd see in a lot of the iron man helmets on screen in the in the big movies but anyway uh that's it for this tutorial so that's it for part one of this Iron Man series. Really and truly knowing that there's some people out there who made it to the end of this tutorial puts a smile on my face. And if you found any sort of value in this video, I ask you to consider subscribing, liking, or telling me how you found this tutorial in the comments below. And to anyone who's put in the effort to make this helmet, I would genuinely love to see it. So send it to me on Instagram at oluwa.taming and I'll be sure to repost it like this one here. As mentioned before, this is only part one. So in the next video, we'll be adding materials to our model, making custom metal shaders. And trust me, this will be a lot of fun, so be on the lookout for that. Last things, I want to say thank you to Kid Kofi for the beat, and of course, thank you to Prod Kai for the music playing throughout the video, both linked in the description below. As a side note, I do commissions for 3D art, particularly trading cards, so hit me up if you have a job offer. And finally, many thanks for the thousand subscribers which I hit as I was editing this video. So, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.